I think it's fair to say that this is a, a substantial step forward uh, in the technology around hair follicle neogenesis. There have been a lot of progress over the past uh, 10 years or so in improving culture conditions and getting induction to work in rodent models. But one of the big technological impasses has really been getting it to work in a human system. And so, to our understanding, this is the first time it's actually been shown in an entirely human-to-human -human context. So that's really one major key advance. The way that hair transplant is carried out currently uh, is simply a relocation of hairs from the back of the scalp to the front. Um, this results in no net gain of hair follicles. It's simply a relocation of the same number of follicles. The goal of hair transplant neogenesis or hair follicle neogenesis is actually to grow additional hair follicles. And to do that, the main approach has been to remove cells from the back of the head uh, grow them out in culture and then find a way to implant them into the front of the head to actually result in a net gain of follicles. For roughly the past 40 years or so, it's been known that uh, hair follicle dermal papilla cells, which are a small stem cell population at the base of the hair follicle, are actually inductive, meaning they can actually grow a new hair when they're put in the right context. Uh, it's known that they have that property when they're used intact, when they're just dissected from one hair and moved, uh, but it's not yet been shown that they can be expanded in culture and actually multiplied. And so the goal of hair follicle neogenesis is to do just that, to be able to culture dermal papilla cells long term, grow them in some conditions that will then allow them to restore hair when they're reimplanted into the scalp. And so that's one of the key points of our findings is that we've now come up with a way uh, to do exactly that. In this study, we actually tested uh, about seven different donors for the potential for their cells to induce hairs, and five out of those seven actually showed signs of, of induction. So our hope is that, again, with improving the conditions, we can get that up to 100%. But at least for now, it's a strong indication that at least in the majority of donors that we tested, uh, they seem to be able to undergo induction under these conditions. So we begin by taking uh, hair follicles from the back of the scalp. Um, we microdissect out the dermal papilla, place it in culture, uh, allow it to be expanded under normal conditions. And then prior to implanting it into the graft assays, uh, we actually turn the cells into a three-dimensional sphere of several thousand cells, uh, grow them in that configuration for a few days, uh, which seems to then jumpstart uh, gene expression that will promote their inductivity, and we then take those spheres uh, and implant them into non-hairy human skin, uh, and then put that on the back of a mouse, leave it for several weeks, and then come back and look to see uh, if hairs have actually been induced. Several steps still have to be um, advanced in order to make this procedure useful for humans in clinical settings. Um, in particular, uh, there are several different ways to think about using dermal cells to induce hairs. Uh, some protocols just infuse the, the cells into the scalp by injection. In our case, we'd like to actually attempt a full induction. Um, there have been several clinical trials using dermal cells, but not using this particular approach. So several obstacles still remain, um, angling, positioning, hair cycle, hair color. Uh, but the basics, at least the first step, is actually showing it can be done, and I think that's really the take-home message from this study. One thing that is missing in... Um, skin substitutes or skin replacements, the kind of things that are put on to burn patients or even to people that have lost skin through elective surgery is that they don't have normal skin appendages like hair follicles and sweat glands. And actually this work could be equally or even more important in terms of being able to create a skin, create a skin substitute that could be used for skin grafts or um, for patients that have lost skin and provide a, a, a much better, a much improved or more functional skin when it's replaced. So it's not just hair follicle replacement per se that's going to be important in this, it's, it's skin replacement.